All right, hello. I'm Salt, and I am uh, privileged and honored to get to participate in this live stream thing that the Corning Museum of Glass is doing. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, some pipe technique. Um, really excited to get to share some of the pipe culture with the overall glass community. So, uh, you know, pull up a chair, get some popcorn, uh, and I'll try to explain a little bit about what I'm doing. Um, so today I used some uh, Paramore Peach and I did an application over clear as my base. And I'm also going to incorporate uh, some uh, Alchemy Potion, it's a nice new CFL activated color. And uh, I'm also going to incorporate some uh, of the original gun mounts made here at Corning many, many years ago for uh, television sets. So in the spirit of uh, kind of marrying the past and the future together, I'm going to use these, all these different colors on one piece. And uh, I don't know, hope you guys enjoy, so. All right, so traditionally, to make a pipe bubble, uh, in other words, to get the smoke from an elevated position down into the bottom of the water chamber, uh, scientific technique was adapted in order to do something called a downstem. Uh, and there's other uh, things like butt seals and ring seals also adapted from scientific glass blowing in order to uh, create the functionality, uh, at least traditionally. And so what I'm demonstrating right now is called a rip curl, and it's a version of uh, what I categorize as a salt perk, which stands for sculpturally applied linear tube or tunnel. And so this is uh, my adaptation uh, of an organic and sculptural approach to making something function. And I feel like it's probably the, one of the most innovative things that I have to offer. And that's why I chose to show this for the live stream. So I'm carving in some negative space here into the wall of my uh, water chamber. Okay, now I'm satisfied with uh, the depth and the definition. I'm going to use the tungsten pick to get some holes in it. I banged it on the table just in case there's any little flecks of glass in there. I don't want them sticking arbitrarily to the inside of my uh, bong that I'm making here. All right, now I'm going to make the uh, rest of the downstem by covering up part of this channel with some of this potion.
minor adjustments here. Oh, this is nice. The class is quiet right now. Nobody's saying anything. All right, I got it all melted smooth. Can I show you guys a little closer what's going on here? Okay, so the, the smoke will enter up here, travel down this tube, and tap into the bottom of my vessel here.
All right, so you might notice I just popped a big hole in the side of this thing, and uh, I'm gonna try to do something interesting with it. Right, so now I have a window of potion that lets you view into the bubble chamber of this bong I'm making. <clears throat> uh, in the pipe culture, the ability to see what's going on inside is highly valued, so that's why I've innovated this technique. Excuse me. Actually, hand me that rod of uh, the peach sticking out of the kiln. It's on the right there. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. So with this Paramore peach color, I find that it, uh, along with a lot of the Paramore colors, they work better for me if I mix them up a little bit. So I'm just gonna prepare a little uh, section of that mixed up color that I'll use to do uh, some eyelids and other details on the piece. That's what I'm doing right now.
fellas. All right, so I just added what's called a bridge. Uh, so this piece of clear, uh, excuse me, this piece of clear glass adds structure to what I'm working on, but will not be part of the finished piece. It's just there so that I can be more aggressive and get the glass hotter without it losing its shape.
Yeah, there was a bubble and I popped it and now I'm melting it out.
Okay, now I got a lid on my uh, bottom window there. I call that a sole window because it's, you know, the eyes being the window to the sole. And this allows you to see inside to the functional part of my rip curl. Uh, and on this side, I got one of my traditional salt eyes also lit it up. Where's my new tool at? There it is. Yeah, shout out to uh, Scott Griffin, my TA and uh, maker of Whoa. Griffin tools <laughs> for hooking up this special tool real time for me. Yeah, yeah, we like we talked about it yesterday, and he already had it made by this morning. So. You want to plug your website real quick? Yeah, <laughs> hit up griffinglass.com for the best tools in the flame working industry. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about my fee later on, all right? Cool. <laughs> slave to the man, slave to the man.
All right, watch out behind me. It's all in the wrist, y'all. Uh, behind me is the little wick tool. The is it not back there? No, the uh, right here. The pipe cleaner with the paper towel on it. Here's a trick for the internet: pipe cleaner with the paper towel to get the condensation out of my tube. Thanks.
Hmm. I don't like that. It's a spot I really don't like right here, so I'm just going to take it out.
How are we doing on time? It's noon right now. Can I keep going? The camera guy says I can keep going, so I'm gonna keep going for you guys.
Looks like I got it too hot. It's kind of bent over. So I'm going to cut my bridge. Or I'm going to attempt, anyway, to cut my bridge and straighten it. I'm working uh, very, very aggressively right now in, in order to try to finish this thing in time for you guys. So sometimes that causes unforeseen issues like this one. Uh, this is close set. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Krista the tech who's been helping me the whole time I was here. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, uh, one of y'all lop the end of that off so it's open for me? It's okay. It's fine as is. Thank you. So I choose this imagery of eyes and teeth, uh, sometimes claws and armor uh, for my pieces because the salt pipe grew up in an environment where pipes were not, sometimes not seen as art because they were functional or just because of the stigma attached to the pipe um, and also not seen as legal at times. And so I make a pipe that's both camouflaged in order to protect itself, protect its end user 
and I used this imagery of uh, the defense mechanisms uh, featured in animals and insects in order to uh, kind of give my pieces the tools they need to defend themselves in these harsher environments. Um, and at the same time, the salt pipe is uh, meant to be treated like a living thing. You know, if you take care of it, it'll take care of you. Uh, and so I like to think about the symbiotic relationship between the owner and the piece and how these people, the vast network of people that every day use their salt piece and have a positive experience, maybe have like a perspective change. Uh, and those ideas are really exciting and satisfying to me. And so this is why I do the things that I do. Will you run the uh, condensation tool through that, please? Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. If it's not going to work, I'll just take it. No, it's fine.
Okay, so this is how it goes sometimes. Because of how quickly and aggressively I've been working in order to try to finish, uh, there were times whenever I would have normally reheated this thing in the kiln. And as a result, I've got a crack. But I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you guys how I would fix this. So first I'm stabilizing the crack with an annealing flame so it doesn't spread. Then I'm getting everything that I can see on the surface fully molten. And then I'm gonna look through this clear bottom to see on the inside if there's any more crack. I actually, I do see a little bit. And so the fastest way to fix that is like this. That's not the fire alarm, is it? <laughs> I hate to have to finish this thing with the building burning down around me. Okay, again, I'm stabilizing. I'm going to go inside and hit the back side of the crack, which usually will make it just immediately disappear. And it did. I got lucky because it wasn't a bad one. It was literally just as a result of kind of pushing things a little too far in order to try to finish. And now I'm kind of using my mini torch like a flashlight because it will, it will light anything up that's damaged and let me know. Students, do you guys remember when I was talking about these press glass colors wanting to separate and crack on the surface? Yeah. So that's what I was talking about it. Okay. It makes like it's a it's a crack that if you don't deal with it, it can be really bad, but if you if you get on it immediately, they like kind of go away on their own. Yeah, on this one I had uh, two different spots. On one the clear was cracked, and that's why I went inside. And what happened was I was just too aggressive with some of this texturing. Uh, and on the other part over here, I had a light surface crack go through some of this texture that was on the outside, but it didn't go through to the clear. And so now you can see I'm just kind of paddling back and forth over it and kind of burnishing it back into place. And then I'm going to redo my carb lines. going to close this up and let it sit for a second. Yeah, 
I probably do. It's pretty bad. Okay. So some of that texture that I put on there that caused the problem uh, is actually one of the things that I always incorporate into my pieces because pipe art is experienced in a different way than most traditional forms of art in that you're supposed to touch it. Um, and not just touch it, but you, you share it, you hand it to other people, and you have these social experiences with it. So knowing that, I try to take advantage of those opportunities and add textures for the end user to interact with while they're smoking out of their salt pipe. And some of those textures are meant to bring you into the moment, you know, some sharper points, you know, that are there to remind you that you're holding a piece of glass um, and just also to be present and enjoy like what's happening right now. Whereas other textures are meant to be more relaxing, like a worry stone or, you know, one of those little squeeze balls. Um, and while others are meant to be kind of meditative, you know, so if you're thinking some deep thoughts about something, you can kind of pet your salt pipe and it will relax you and help you think, in theory.